to my channel my name is Nora and thank you so much for watching before we jump into today's video be sure to like comment share subscribe follow your girl on Instagram TikTok, and Twitter because you already know we're growing the family across all platforms welcome back y'all today's video luxury wish list now I don't know if I want to call this like my wish list for the whole year maybe we'll say this is gonna be for like the first half of the year kind of like winter spring yeah maybe we'll maybe we'll break it down that way maybe we'll just say this is for the first half of the year and then if we do add some things throughout the year if it changes if we take some things on and off maybe we'll do some new ones so i don't know if i'm quite yet ready to commit to saying that this is my luxury wish list for all of 2024 but time will tell so for today we have 10 different items that we're going to talk about y'all already know as always handy dandy cell phone is close by um but yeah we have 10 different items that we're going to talk about today um mainly across i'd say bags ready to wear and then shoes as well um i kept it to 10 items because as i continue to build my luxury wish list or just when i'm thinking of my wish list in general I really want it to be items that I am like really, really excited about and that like I can tell are going to be really good additions to my wardrobe. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. As always, I will have pictures here on screen of the items that I'm talking about. Um, I will probably link anything down below if you are interested in checking them out and purchasing them as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy and let's jump right in. All right, so all of these items are honestly in no particular order. But we're gonna start off with bags and this first item if I had to say like my top wish list item it would definitely be the Bottega Jody bag shocker I mean honestly if you've been keeping along on my channel you definitely know this bag the, the chokehold that this bag has on me I don't honestly think I'm ever going to be released from it until I purchase the bag buying that bag from anthropology only further made me realize how much i love the bag how much i love the silhouette and how much i want the actual bottega one in my collection if you keep up with anything from bottega and i know there are different creators on like tiktok and instagram that actually like dive into the quality of different luxury and designer bags bottega has some of the best leather out there on the market plain and simple okay when you think about Bottega and you look at that weaving detail that they have on their bags there is a reason why time and time again I feel like every season every year they're pretty much at the top of the list of must-have luxury bags that people want that people are super super excited about and let me tell you the Jody is no different now it comes in I want to say maybe like five different sizes you have like their candy there's a mini there is your teen size and then there's a small and a medium so i am right now going between the teen and the small size i think those are probably going to be most in line with like what's going to work for my wardrobe what i would wear like most often i feel like those sizes are probably going to be the sizes i'm leaning towards the most and then in terms of colors because they have a ton of different colors i'm really going back and forth on either the chocolate brown or the green one okay you probably are surprised or maybe you're not but I know a lot of people are kind of like huh you don't want the black one because I have the dupe or the look for less from anthropology in black I don't want another bag that similar essentially in the same color it didn't make sense to me to pick it up in black so I'm thinking that chocolate brown baby I love I mean I love browns I love neutral colors and things that will go with a lot of different outfits and their chocolate brown is like pretty deep that honestly depending on the lighting she kind of looks black anyway so really really love the chocolate brown but then I also love the green y'all know even though red is my favorite color something about green I'm telling you like that deep like khaki olive hunter green I'm really really into so I'm going back and forth on sizing going back and forth on color but if there's any item on this list that i think i'm really really going to work my little hiney off to see if i can pick her up this year it's gonna have to be the bottega jody bag all right so our next luxury wishlist item is another bag and it is the louis vuitton speedy okay 
And I know for some of y'all, you're probably like, sweetie, really girl, like what's the big deal? What's the gag? Okay, so listen, I have always loved the Speedy from Louis Vuitton. There's something about the silhouette, you know, it's a top handle bag, but it's a little bit bigger than like your traditional mini bag. Like I just really loved the shape of it. Like it definitely gives like carry on, keep all type of feel to like their duffel bags, which I have one of their duffel bags that I travel with just in a smaller version and I love it. I think it's super cute and it's just something about like the slouchiness of the bag and just like the canvas material that I really, really love. I also am someone who loves the LV monogram in particular. So this would definitely be a bag that I would probably lean towards the monogram type of canvas print. I've also really been intrigued and interested in some of the vintage Louis Vuitton speedies as well. And I feel like vintage in general has been something that a lot of people are shopping a lot more, which I'm really, really here for. Um, I'm looking at it in two different sizes right now, either the 25 or the 30. Um, I'd say my first choice is probably, again, kind of the traditional speedy in the brown monogram. Um, I'm also interested in some of the kind of like speedy, like LV collabs that they've done. So I'd be super open to any of the ones that they did with like the cherry detail on it, the multicolored, and even the bag, I can't remember the designer exactly, but even the speedy that they did with kind of like the graffiti type of print, I'm also super intrigued and interested in that. I feel like honestly, the speedy in general is having such a moment, um, especially with Pharrell now being creative director over at Louis Vuitton. He has been going ham, okay, and knocking it out of the park with the Speedies, okay? That entire collection, especially what he just showed recently at Men's Fashion Week, are, are, are you playing with me? Are you kidding me? Sickening, okay? I was gagging at every single bag that came down that runway. Now, I will say a lot of those bags in that collection, baby, not for me because they're not in my, uh, you know, price tax bracket, if you will. I think most of those speedies in his collection are anywhere between 10 to like 13,000. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I do believe a lot of the speedies he's releasing as well are genuine leather, if I'm not mistaken, which would make sense because Louis Vuitton's leather, obviously you will see kind of an uptick in price. Long story long, second wishlist item is the LV Speedy. All right, and the third item and final bag on my luxury wish list is the Saint Laurent I Care bag. I love this bag. I love this freaking bag. And I know y'all are probably thinking, okay, girl, the Speedy is, you know, kind of a good size. The Bottega bag, kind of a good size. And then I wanna come in here with this, you know, humongous type of carry-all, if you will, from Saint Laurent. And yes, I am really in my big bag era. I feel like I have like a really good kind of like rounded out collection of smaller clutches. Are there some clutches I could probably still add? Of course, there's always opportunity for expansion. But the big bag trend, there is a reason why it is going to be so big this year, and I am loving it. I think for a lot of just like my everyday looks, I don't always wanna carry a clutch, to be honest. And not because I'm necessarily carrying a lot of items, I just think for styling purposes and a lot of different looks and vibes and auras that I'm trying to give, the big bag just eats, okay? The big bag just eats differently and I feel like the Saint Laurent eye care bag is no different. Now, I know for a lot of people, they do think it is too big. Um, I know there was a lot of like discourse as well around the price tag because I think she's like $4,000, $4,100. She's expensive for sure. But the difference I will say with this bag obviously is in comparison to maybe some other bags. She is 100% genuine caviar leather. So when you think about that much leather in a bag, I feel like $4,000 makes sense. When you're comparing it to a Chanel classic flap, medium size, that's $13 thousand dollars okay both of them made from caviar leather four thousand thirteen thousand and again for the size of the bag i just feel like the math is math in, and it makes sense to me girl math right absolutely love it and i feel like for me i am someone who travels a lot i do a lot of like quick little weekend trips as well so i just feel like this is a really good like spend a night big okay if you if you if you pick it up what i'm putting down this is a really good and an eye egg, if you will. I just think she's so cute. I could definitely see me wearing this with like athleisure looks as well. Again, I could use it as like a quick weekender bag. She's a really good travel bag. Um, I feel like if I'm like running errands, I don't know. I have a lot of like looks in my head that I feel like she'd be a great pickup. 
All right, now moving into ready to wear, I feel like this is probably the largest category. And I will say over like the last two years or so, I have definitely started to invest in ready to wear pieces a lot more. I know sometimes people go back and forth on whether it's worth it to spend the price tag and the money on designer like clothing and ready to wear pieces. And I can totally understand why sometimes people are a little bit hesitant, but this is my kind of rhyme or reason or the way that I approach shopping luxury clothing and ready to wear pieces. I feel like if you are buying items that are going to be staple capsule wardrobe, if you will, I know we're trying to like lean away from that, but if you're thinking about staple items in your wardrobe, things that you wear a lot, I definitely think ready to wear high-end luxury items would be a great place to invest in. Again, that's for me, I know not for everyone, but for me personally, when I'm thinking about jackets, outerwear, denim, basics that I know I wear a lot, I have no problem investing in them because honestly, by the time you calculate your return on investment, your cost per wear, it makes a lot of sense. Yes, you can buy cheaper denim. Yes, you could buy cheaper jackets, but oftentimes the quality sometimes can correlate. Granted, do you always have to buy a luxury designer item to get good quality? No, but for the sake of this conversation, if you are thinking about shopping ready to wear, that would kind of be my rule of thumb. Don't get me wrong. Am I someone who has also purchased trendier items? I have. Do I wear them a lot? I don't, and they're usually the first items that I am selling and getting rid of in my closet. So if you are ever considering venturing and tiptoeing into ready to wear, I always say think of like staple items and pieces that you'll get a lot of use out of. So with all that, my first item in kind of the ready to wear section um, is gonna be the Balenciaga Hourglass Coat. Okay, let me tell you. For one, we are knee deep in winter, okay? Winter has shown up and showed out. Everyone in Boston was trying to tell her to stand on business and see if she really was what she was about. And she's standing on business, okay? She's standing on business 10 toes because it's freezing and it's been snowing like crazy. For me, outerwear is definitely an area I'm always going to invest in because again, living in New England in Boston, it is cold six months out of the year. So I will always get a lot of wear out of my outerwear and my coats. This Balenciaga, hourglass jacket chef's kiss okay mike freaking drop i saw a video of janae naylor wearing this and she literally was just wearing it in like a super casual like travel outfit and i loved it the way that the jacket was able to elevate the look on its own was absolutely stunning i love a floor length kind of like wool pea coat type of look um, i love the color that she has this jacket and if i remember correctly i think it was in like a camel brown color i've seen it in camel brown i've seen it in black i've seen it in like a lighter tan and i've also seen it in this like houndstooth kind of design if you will but it was in like a yellow red and brown houndstooth so i've seen it in a couple different colors that camel, that camel brown is really speaking to me and the black one as well. But something about just the structure of the jacket, you have a stronger shoulder, which I always love on my frame, but they call it the hourglass because as you can see on the jacket, she cinches in real nice and good on the waist. And like I always tell y'all, I have an athletic shape, so as someone who wants to kind of give the illusion of a small waist and a little bit more of like a curvy hip ratio, I love what this jacket does. And again, the price tag is definitely up there, but I have been looking around on like resale sites and you can actually find this jacket for like a pretty good, <laughs> and I'm using that loosely, but you can find it for a pretty good price on the resale and secondhand site. So that's probably gonna be the route that I'm gonna go, but I love this jacket. Again, I think it is timeless. You don't have a ton of logos everywhere, so it's definitely something that's a little bit understated, but great quality and will last a really long time. I could be perfectly fine with just that jacket, but again, I am someone who loves outerwear. I love coats, I love jackets. They are kind of my like go-to in terms of expressing myself with my wardrobe and my looks, especially in colder months. So fall and winter, I am always gravitating to really nice jackets. And this should be no surprise because if you watched my recent video talking about black luxury brands, this wool coat from Fear of God, I need her. I need her. And I already know she gonna break the bank, baby. She gonna break the bank, so let me just tell you, we are cooking, okay? We're cooking all our meals at home. We're not doing no Uber Eats. We're gonna keep going on this not drinking train because we're saving money for this jacket. She's beautiful. 
She's absolutely beautiful. I've never seen the jacket in person. I have never seen it in person, but I already know as someone who has purchased items from Fear of God, like their essentials line, I've seen other pieces from the collection in person. I just know she's good. I just know she eats. Something about the texture, I really, really love as well. I am definitely someone who loves a good Sherpa, boucle type of feel. Um, and I really, really love the look of that on this jacket. I like the oversized feel as well, um, which I always tell people, don't be afraid to play with sizes and proportions. Um, I am a smaller frame, smaller person. Again, I'm only five, three and a half, but I still really enjoy like a really oversized coat floor length. I just think there's something really elevated and chic and just luxe about the look. Um, the color is again something that I gravitate to a lot. I can keep it monochromatic. I could do like a winter white with that coat as well. I could even play it up with some colors too. Maybe not super, super bright, but I could play it up with some colors as well. I just think this jacket again would be another staple in my wardrobe. She's just so damn good. If y'all could have seen my reaction when I saw it on Instagram for the first time, I gagged. I gagged in the best way possible. I literally was saying out loud to myself, Nora, you need to do whatever you can to get your hands on that jacket. And that's why she's on the wish list. And that's why we are going to eat at home. Yes, we have McDonald's money, but do we have fear of God wool coat money? Not quite yet. So we're going to eat at home. <laughs> All right, so the next item on my luxury wish list, I also mentioned this brand and this piece in that black luxury fashion brands to kind of shop uh, video. And it is the black kind of like tight form fitting midi dress from Christopher John Rogers. I can't get it out of my head. I cannot get the dress out of my head and I just know I would wear her down, okay? I know I would wear this dress down and I'm okay with that. For one, I am someone, baby, if I'm spending money on my clothes and on my items, you gonna see her. We wear our items around here. We repeat outfits on this channel. Secondly, and I know I mentioned it in that video, there are a lot of different ways to style this piece and that's another reason why I think she would be a really good kind of like addition to my wardrobe, okay? You can kind of wear her traditionally, just as a dress with like the deep plunge and like a really cute strappy heel, but you could also do a boot. You could also wear something underneath. So if I wanted to do a turtleneck, add like a leather jacket on top with like some chunky platform boots, like I could wear this so many different ways. And because yes, it does have kind of like that multicolored detail around the neckline, it's a black dress. You know, it's a black midi dress it's form fitting, so it is going to be timeless. It is definitely gonna be something that I am going to be able to wear for years and years and years to come. And then on top of that, it's made by a black designer. I mean, it's a win-win situation. So definitely want to purchase that item this year. I feel like she's definitely in reach. I know some of these items is given delusional, but I mean, delulu until trululu. But like, I definitely think she is attainable this year. So this next item kind of makes me chuckle, right? Because I've gone back and forth on whether or not I wanted this item for a while because I was like, is it super trendy? Am I gonna be over it at some point? Like, I don't really know if it's something I'm gonna love. And after sitting on this item for about a year, I'm, I'm, I've put her finally on my luxury wish list because I've come to terms with the fact that, girl, you love it, okay? The fact that I'm always revisiting this item, I'm always checking to see if it's on sale, can I find it, isn't in my size. I'm at a place where I'm like, you know what, this year we are going to make a point to see if we can attain her and put her in our wardrobe. And it is the Margiela kind of like cut, split jeans. I don't really know what the name of the jeans are called. It'll be here on screen, obviously, for y'all to see. But I love them. I love them. I'm really intrigued and I love them. I have seen so many dupes, looks for less, if you will, all over the internet. So I know, yes, I could achieve the look and get something similar um, a lot of different places, right? But as someone, I will say, as a lover of denim, I do spend a little bit more money on my denim and I will also say you can tell the difference. Some items, uh, you know what, I'm gonna keep it a buck with y'all, I'm not even gonna go back and forth, I'm not even gonna tussle with y'all, you're right. Some items I'm like, mm, mm. yeah, I, I paid for the brand, right? Like, let's keep it a buck. My Louis Vuitton tank, I already told y'all straight up, was it worth the money? No, it definitely was the name brand. 
Denim, denim is one area that's a hill that I actually will kind of, you know, tussle with y'all on a little bit that I feel like denim, you can genuinely feel the difference in the quality of jeans, plain and simple. So I know for sure, granted I've never seen them in person, but like I know for sure the quality is probably spectacular. There are a ton of influencers that I follow and that I honestly, I take their advice and their input into consideration. Like I definitely value their opinion and I trust them that I feel like, okay, if the girlies are telling me the denim is given and the jeans are given, the jeans are giving. Um, it was for sure those slits that they have on the side that I was kind of going back and forth. Like, Nori, are you really going to love these, you know, years down the line, years in the future? Could you just make a pair yourself? You know, all those questions went through my head, but I love it. I really do love that little detail. I think it's something that makes the jeans unique, but it's not too crazy, if that makes sense. You know, it's not too outlandish that I'm like, I don't really know if it's something that I'm gonna love. Like there are a pair of denim that I've seen from Louis Vuitton and then Dior as well, where they make kind of the logo denim. So it's like the logo is embossed all over the jeans. Love those as well, but I know for someone like me, it's not something I would reach for a lot. Whereas these Margella jeans, really besides like the cuts on the side, like I love the silhouette, I love the shape of the denim. That's really about it. They're just a really nice pair of jeans. And kind of what I've been telling myself is like, well, you have ripped jeans in your wardrobe, you know, like denim that has like rips in the knees or on the thighs or whatever. And that's kind of the same thought process. Like there's holes in the jean. I don't know. I feel like these Margiela jeans just give kind of like the distressed denim vibe, but in a more elevated chic look, it's not super, super distressed where your legs are just hanging out everywhere. You still get a little bit of edge, a little bit of fun, but in a still classic and chic elevated way. So I think I finally convinced myself that I really do indeed love these pair of jeans. And that's why I put them on my wish list. All right, and the last ready to wear item that I added on my wish list is a new add on. And let me tell y'all, it is this red mini dress from Jacquemus. Okay, I don't know if y'all are keeping up, but Jacquemus just showcased their new spring summer collection, eight down, okay, eight down. There were a ton of pieces from that entire collection that I really, really loved. Jacquemus is a brand that I thoroughly enjoy. Again, if I'm investing this kind of money in luxury items, I want it to be shit that I can wear for a long time. I feel like Jacques Mousse does a really good job of that. Like it's still creative, it's innovative. You can see Jacques Mousse's mind, you know, with his designs, but it's not too out there. You know, a lot of their ready to wear pieces, I think are items that really translate very nicely into most of our everyday lives. I know for a lot of fashion shows, we watch them and it's like, cute, like I get it, cute, yeah. Definitely like couture, I could see the creativity, but I'm never gonna wear any of those items. Jacques Mousse, I still feel like gives us the best of both worlds that you can see couture, you can see design, you can see the craftsmanship, but it's a little bit more practical. This red mini dress was just that, okay? Was just that. Kylie Jenner was actually wearing this dress to the show, loved it on her. She did kind of like an all red monochromatic look. I think she wore a red pump as well. I think she did black sunglasses, um, but then I did see a couple pictures that she did like a floor length fur red coat over top as well. Loved the look down. Y'all know red still trending from last year. I know we said we were probably gonna go a little bit more into deeper reds, but still this gorgeous kind of like cherry red I think is stunning. Um, I love kind of like the airiness of kind of like the detailing up top, but again, that it is mini. 10 out of 10 for me, love this dress. Red is my favorite color. Like baby, could you imagine this on like a Valentine's Day like date night? Stop playing with her. All right, and the last two items on my luxury wish list are shoes. So I wanted to mention two different ones that again have kind of been on my eye, if you will, that I'm really, really excited about. First pair of shoes, Renee Calvilla. Let me tell you, those Renee Calvilla heels that just like wrap around like the ankle, it just does something to me. It just does something to me. I really enjoy like a sandal heel. Like I love a really good strappy heel. Something that's real simple, um, but sexy. I just think they look really feminine on the foot. Um, I really like the way my feet look in those kind of shoes. Like I have um, a pretty high arch, so I feel like those shoes look really nice. I don't know, there's just something so 
for lack of better words, sexy. Something so sexy and dainty and ladylike about like a really strappy sandal that I love. And I enjoy kind of that wraparound detail that the Renee Calvilla heels do. It's like, it's so simple, but it adds a little, just, a, just enough, just enough of a, of a little touch, you know, where it's not too much, but it's gonna make you look twice, you know what I mean? You're gonna be like, oh, I really like, oh, I really like those shoes. You know what I'm saying? Like it just elevates the look a little bit more and I really, really love them. Um, I have seen kind of just like their standard like crystallized one. I have seen some that have like the little gems hanging down on like that little wraparound portion. Um, I have seen some that are just in like a traditional like satin sateen fabric. Um, I did just see a recent pair actually that I think Monroe Steel put up that they're black, but then it has like a really nice like multicolored detail on kind of like the wraparound. Again, I'll have some pictures here. I really, really like these shoes too too because I feel like they are a heel that I could dress up and dress down somewhat. Like I could definitely see wearing like a cropped denim, you know, with these for like drinks with my girls, a little cocktail hour, brunch. But then I feel like you could also dress them up a ton. And then again, depending on like the specific style that you pick up. Again, they have some that are a little bit, you know, a little bit fancier and a little bit more sparkly and have all like the crystal jewels on them. And then they have some that are a little bit more like classic um, but overall just like that strap kind of detail wrap around detail around the ankle I absolutely love now I don't know how comfortable they are I've been doing some research some of the girls are saying they're super comfortable some are saying that they're not I'm sure it all depends on how you kind of deal with walking in heels anyways um, I do know they're a, a pretty high heel and then again when you're talking about that kind of sandal um, it's not like their platform so you are definitely on an incline um, I'm pretty comfortable in heels like give me a four inch heel stiletto four and a half five inch heel I'm solid, I'm really good. I actually, if anything, I'm usually more comfortable in heels. So I feel like I would be fine, but I would definitely wanna go in, test them out a little bit just to make sure before pulling the train. And the last item that I wanted to mention for my luxury wish list, as well as for shoes, and it's, it's, it's two items, but they're kind of similar, right? Okay, so I have really been loving kind of like the clog, mule type of trend if you will i feel like it's kind of interchangeable depending on what you're talking about but i've really been loving that trend so it's two items here in particular that i have on my wish list but i think if i do make a decision to buy it will be one or the other i don't think i'll purchase both or will i <laughs> i don't know crazier things have happened but I'm going back and forth between the JW Anderson kind of like mule slide, if you will, um, or clog. Again, I feel like you kind of hear both. Um, then I'm also considering the LV kind of like logo monogram mule clog as well. Love both of them, okay? Absolutely love both of them. Obviously the JW Anderson one is gonna give us a little bit more sleek, a little bit more classic, more timeless. I really love the all black with the gold buckle on them. Um, my cousin actually has a pair of them and every time I see him wear them, love them and he styles them so well he has dressed it up dressed it down he's done them with like an oversized like slouchy trouser but he's also done them with like shorts like you can wear them so many different ways i absolutely love them and again with the black and gold it would go with so many items and looks in my wardrobe so really really love that really really leaning towards that essence just actually had them on sale but i wasn't able to get them in my size and as much as i was watching and keeping a lookout i wasn't able to get them so i'm gonna keep an eye out i feel like they're reasonably priced Really, really love the pair from JW Anderson. But I also really love the ones from LV as well. Now, still same kind of like color family, if you will. Obviously, you've got the brown and kind of like goldish color in the LV monogram. And then I believe the sole of the shoe is black. So still something that I can wear a lot, but obviously you do run into the fact that it has the entire like LV monogram on the top of the shoe. So. Yes, I'll obviously get a lot more wear out of the JW Anderson pair, but like the LV ones, I really, really love too. Like I really, really love both. And something is telling me to just get both, but like I'm trying to be responsible and good, so I don't really know. That's why I'm mentioning both of them. Both of them are on my wish list right now. I wanna say that I'm gonna be responsible and hopefully get one or the other. 
but who knows okay who knows i'm kind of listening to both of these these mofos on my shoulder and this one over here that's telling me to get both is kind of winning right now but i don't really know i'm just in general loving the mule kind of like clog style especially as we're slowly creeping into warmer months and spring like late summer nights just like something real quick to like slide on i think it's so chic and cute but it's elevated like when i don't want to just wear like a regular sandal if i don't want to just put on like some yeezy foam runners which i love my foam runners but like to just elevate the look and make it a little bit more chic i feel like the mule slide clog type of trend 10 out of 10 love it and that is it y'all so that is all that i have for today's video that is my luxury wish list thus far again i don't know if i want to call this it's definitely not my 2024 wish list let's just say that okay let's just keep it a book okay this is not my wish list for the entire year we'll just say h1 right the first half of the year maybe even q1 maybe q1 it's giving q1 maybe that's what we'll call her right i don't even know if i want to say the season it's giving q1 uh luxury wish list so i will definitely keep y'all posted again make sure you are subscribed Make sure you're following along because as I purchase items, y'all know I'll be doing unboxings, featuring them in collective hauls. Make sure you're following me on TikTok as well. I will say TikTok is probably the first, you know, family. Those cuzzles over there always get the first look at anything that I purchase. So if you want to see what I'm grabbing, what I'm buying, what I'm spending my coin on, make sure you're following me across all platforms. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, y'all.